on May 19th, I tried to file a motion with the Court of Appeals uh, regarding Rule 60. I was told that I had to open up a new electronic account on some sort of paid gov site and that I had to go again through the district court here in Dallas. My understanding is that starting today actually is a deadline concerning a focus group at the courthouse where people are supposed to do what? Review actual legal materials or engage in some mock trial? I had a serious legal matter. And I believe that what's happening right now, after they just put a lien on my account, today would be the 10th day after they did that. I've had my other account returned, but they took it offline for seven days under false allegations that I contend were used in very serious crimes. And I believe what's happening now is they're running some sort of scenario connected to whatever that focus group is. This isn't about a focus group. I had a 100% legitimate claim regarding a need for a new trial because of the crimes that had been committed in consideration of my good faith efforts at due process while I was completely denied any access to legal representation. And I was attempted for extortion into serious crimes, crimes that now have global implications. Now, my understanding is that part of what was invoked in my request for relief from a judgment order has to do with grounds for relief from a final judgment order or proceeding. And one of the reasons is newly discovered evidence that with reasonable diligence could not have been discovered in time to move for a new trial under Rule 59B and or fraud, whether previously called intrinsic or extrinsic misrepresentation or misconduct by an opposing party. Now, I just found information today that would be the 25th anniversary of its first posting in the Federal Register concerning employee compensation, including for older workers, that is in a context of other matters that I contend is revelatory of and evidence of illegal hedging that has been a part of my original allegations of securities fraud. There is in connection with that a five-year term, including a five-year term that references a specific process involving the U.S. Census. Last autumn, there was a case that went before the Supreme Court of the United States specifically concerning the United States Census. I am not going to speak more on that, although I have actually reviewed that case thoroughly and contend that it actually fits within this pattern of concern that I believe legally constitutes a pattern of racketeering activity and is evidence of a criminal conspiracy. However, there is new evidence in light of the fact that the fifth anniversary of a specific nexus of crime had been first engaged that was not directly acknowledged or attempted for uh, being addressed within the context of my original request for a new trial outside of the specific implications of what transpired while I was trying to seek assistance at a domestic violence shelter that I contended was involved with fraud and child abuse and hence was a justification for me to seek assistance from those that were mandated reporters of fraud and child abuse during the time frame in which I was instead kidnapped. I will not go into all the details except to say a number, a, a few things. First of all, the specific new evidence would connect information around how transactions that occurred through the summer of 2016 were a part of an effort to try to extort me to agree to cooperate with sabotaging a presidential election campaign. This presidential election campaign sabotage would have involved me agreeing to participate in illegal activity with an understanding that I would get arrested and somebody else would pay for the bail bond. Secondly, it also involves me attempting to get assistance with re, uh, getting a new passport issued after mine had been stolen in an act of retaliation. I needed to file a police report and I attempted to file an uh, uh, application for a replacement passport. But when I went to pay for the passport, 
the accounts I was using to pay for the passport were used in acts of securities fraud, including large scale securities fraud that I contend was part of a pre-existing hedging strategy. And it leveraged interfering with my capacity to, re to acquire a replacement passport as part of a long-term strategy having to do with securities fraud, including securities fraud involving pension fraud. At the time, I was seeking assistance with fraud and child abuse at the domestic violence shelter in Texas. I was not aware of the full implications of how these actions from Chicago factored in to what was going on. But while I was in that shelter, I had to use my phone on site to both register a uh, effort to fo open an account with the Federal Trade Commission to uh, engage in an account for uh, uh, identity theft. And my phone was taken out of commission, so I was not able to acquire the PIN number to confirm that account with the Federal Trade Commission. And to this day, I've received absolutely no assistance from the Federal Trade Commission in following up on that original effort to open up an account regarding identity theft in March of 2017. Additionally, around that time, I contacted the major credit bureaus with an understanding that there was a fraudulent charge on my credit concerning a credit card that had been opened in the summer 2016 that had originally been appealed and taken off my record, but then showed up on my record again, beginning in December, January, so December 2016, January of 2017. I contacted both credit bureaus. Both credit bureaus removed that credit card and any charges associated with it from my credit records. There was no record of it by May of 2017. Not only that, but whatever impact it had on my credit was immediately taken out of contention and there was no record of that on my credit report either. But what did happen is the day that I, I faxed that report to the credit bureaus, someone in Houston engaged in transactions associated with what I later learned were the uh, elements of the Houston municipal bond that was pending and was due to have its uh, formal public report in uh, June, July of 2017 that had a specific metric correlation with a two-in-one ratio pattern. I believe that I still have that evidence in uh, my electronic records, but this was revealed to me at another time in a manner that I understood was an attempt to try to extort me into cooperating with what later turned out to be an announcement of a more than $1 billion Houston pension obligation bond in December of 2017. Now my understanding is there is supposed to be some very high level case concerning tax evasion connected to the Trump organization. My understanding was that in May of 2016, what was being attempted was to acquire my cooperation in agreeing to obtain a bail bond as part of a protest of a Republican Party funder in an effort to impact political campaigns associated with Republican candidates up to and including the President of the United States with an understanding that so doing would give me some form of political favor that was to be engaged later for the advantage of people that were supporting the presidential campaign of Hillary Clinton. I had already contacted the House Financial Services Committee and the Senate Banking Committees with a request that they engage an investigation into activities involving former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and others in Chicago who had been a part both of congressional uh, office holding and also were involved in the city of Chicago municipal uh, administration and specifically the relationship that there may have been with city group operations specifically in Central America but particularly Honduras. I had sent them a formal request by the end of March of 2016 and I contend that what was going on by May was an attempt to try to either frame me or extort me into cooperating with relenting on that request and doing so by trying to engage me in some sort of obligation associated with a willingness to acquire a bail bond that could be used as leverage in the future. I believe these are absolutely materially relevant to what's ongoing now. 
and I believe that my efforts to obstruct not only the, the efforts to obstruct not only my efforts at rec uh, receiving some sort of response from Congress in March of 2016, but what ended up transpiring with my efforts to uh, speak with members of the Department of Justice in Chicago in August of 2016 have been intentionally misrepresented and have been used in an attempt to extort me and people with whom I was associated. The impact it had on other political candidates, as far as I'm concerned, is actually subsidiary to the fact that there were people that were engaged not only in ordinary political process, but in rightfully and legally attempting to get their resource needs met, that were attempted into extortion with co the attempted for extortion into cooperation with ongoing criminal conspiracies that go back a substantial amount of time. There's been no successful acknowledgement of the full implications, and unfortunately, this criminal conspiracy has continued to proliferate. If there is any effort right now to use an illegal lien, including an illegal tax lien, through a fraudulent record through the IRS concerning my relationship to uh, any sort of tax reporting, and or any sort of income reporting as some derivative action connected to any litigious efforts involving uh, former President Donald Trump or anybody in the Trump organization, I consider that to be a part of this pattern of racketeering activity. If there was any just cause or reason for doing what just ended up happening, and including what you're trying to do today, you would have already had somebody formally contact me and would have provided me with the evidence I have already requested be provided in consideration of my case through a formal, verifiable process. And you would have also acknowledged the capacity for me to fulfill my own responsibilities related to financial obligations associated with moving forward, and not only the investigation, but the prosecution of my own case in a formal, verifiable forum rather than engaging me in acts of significant securities fraud under the auspices of some sort of uh, casework that is being brokered through the local district court as part of an ongoing pattern that involves people at multiple levels of jurisdiction in abuse of their judicial roles.